before we even describe the major arteries and veins of every region of the body, we need to understand the big picture. So understand one more time, arteries are coming out from your heart, right? They're going away from the heart. So in the systemic circulation, the arteries, ooh, the ones that we're going to describe, right, begins on the left ventricle. This is the beginning of the systemic circulation. So in the left ventricle, we have the aorta. And the aorta has three sections because as you can see, look at the direction of this artery. It begins, this is the left ventricle, it originates right there, then ascends, arches, and then descends posterior to the aorta. It goes through the uh, foramen for the aorta in the diaphragm muscle, and then it continues right in front of the uh, vertebral column in the abdominal cavity until it ends in these two terminal branches. So this is the big picture. Let's see the big branches of this aorta. So we have here the three sections, ascending aorta, the uh, aortic arch, and the descending aorta. Let me show you the sections. From here to here, this is the ascending. This, of course, is your arch. And from here down, all, everything is the descending aorta. Now, in the ascending aorta, what are the two, what is the most, one of the most important organs that we need, you know, to make sure is very well irrigated or oxygenated before we pump blood to any other tissue? The heart itself. So the two may, the two first branches of the aorta are actually the right and left coronary arteries that supply, as you remember, oxygenated blood to the heart, okay? Now, there are terms that we're going to be using back and forth now. One is irrigation. When you irrigate your grass in your house, you're giving it water. Irrigation in here is when you provide or supply blood to the tissue. And when you drain that water, you, well, in here we can also say we drain or collect. What else? Drain, collect, empty. Okay? We need to empty, collect, or drain that blood, okay, in the tissue and send it back to the heart through veins. Okay? Okay. So we describe the branches, the two main branches of the SMT aorta. Check. The right and left coronary artery. Now the three branches of the aortic arch, you have to know them as your ABC. The first one is the brachiocephalic trunk. Brachial, because it gives one branch to the brachial region, to the arm. Cephalic, because the other one ascends to your head. So this is the brachiocephalic trunk. Then we have on the left side, we have left common carotid artery. And the third one is the left subclavian artery. So in here you have the three branches, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery, in that order. You cannot flip them, okay? That's the order of these three branches of the common aortic arch, for sure, I'm gonna ask that. And uh, this is our starter point to describe the, uh, the major blood vessels or the major arteries of the neck and head, the major arteries of the upper limb, okay? Now, let's follow the descending aorta. And as you can see, the descending aorta has one portion that is above the diaphragm or superior to the diaphragm, that's your thoracic aorta. And the portion inferior to the diaphragm, that's the abdominal aorta. Again, I want you to remember this one more time is one closed circuit, is one blood vessel with several branches. And 
that is going to empty in another blood vessels or the veins and I'm going to end in the same organ which is the heart to be pumped again okay so it's a circuit closed circuit now these abdominal ab, ab, uh, abdominal aorta and in these two terminal branches that are called the right and the left common iliac arteries iliac we're at the level of the ilium carotid a new name don't switch them common carotid arteries on the neck common iliac arteries on the two terminal uh, branches of the abdominal aorta okay so this is our starting point to describe the rest of the arteries now what is the end of the systemic circulation well after um, the left ventricle the aorta exits uh, through uh, from the left ventricle it branches blah 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 oxygenates the entire body and then the oxygenated blood needs to go back to the right atrium this is the, the end of the systemic circulation or the end point where the blood vessels are going to open in here remember this is like some posterior view of the left i'm sorry of the right atrium and this side in blue and in here remember they're going to open three veins the superior vena cava the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus superior vena cava is going to drain all the blood from your head neck the two arms and a horizontal line that you can trace through your nipples so all the superior, superior to that line is drained by the superior vena cava and inferior to that line all of that is drained by the inferior vena cava as a matter of fact there is a syndrome called the superior vena cava syndrome where a tumor or other causes can obstruct can block the uh, this vein and the blood cannot be empty the one coming from the superior vena cava cannot be emptied into the right atrium and you see those patients you almost can trace a line and you can see the head the neck superior all the part of the body that is superior to that line is swollen and the rest is not it's super easy to diagnose don't you think um and the coronary sinus is collecting the blood, deoxygenated blood, from the heart and empties that into the right atrium. Okay, so superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and coronary sinus. Now we're going to see how we form these veins. Okay, so in the next video, let's start describing the irrigation and the drainage of the head and neck. Maybe we include their upper limbs. I don't know. Let's see. How is the time? See you.